Hey everyone and welcome to a one-off video with me, GWFM. I'm going to be looking today at the transfer activity that Leeds United have done in the summer transfer window using Football Manager. We're going to have a look at each individual player that signed this season and the ones we let go. And then afterwards we're going to ask you basically what you think of all the transfers that have happened in and out. Uh, what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to use Football Manager. We've got the team sheet here in front of us. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to start in numeric order in terms of the value of the player that we signed. Uh, so, for instance, we're going to start off with Pontus Janssen. I've got the screen open at the side of me to tell us how much they've gone for and which team it was from. So we're going to start with Pontus Janssen. Uh, obviously, we all know about him, any Leeds fans. By the way, if you're not a Leeds fan or if you're not a fan of the Championship, you might as well turn off now because you're probably not going to find this that interesting. But uh, the, the key factor is here that we're looking at the players that have signed for Leeds uh, this season as well. Obviously, there's a couple of loanies. And if you are a Championship fan and you want to check out the opposition, then by all means, stick around. Uh, but yeah, we've got Pontus Janssen permanently, 3.42 million. Uh, we signed him from Torino, Sweden international, of course. Um, has a, a little bit of history with Zlatan, history, uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. But yeah, as we all know about him. We know he's determined, we know he's hardworking, he's aggressive, he's very brave, he's resolute in terms of his personality as well. Uh, attempts overhead kicks, not entirely sure about that one. And obviously he's an animal, being six foot five, uh, and uh, got a well, decent amount of strength and jumping reach. So... We all know what to expect from him. He's, you know, one of the most passionate guys in the team, if not the most passionate guy. Uh, so we're obviously we're very happy to have him, in my opinion, anyway. These are obviously going to be in my opinion. Let us know if you agree in the comments below as well. Uh, it'd be interesting to know your thoughts. Next, we're going to move on to the next most expensive player, which is Samu Saiz, who everyone, I'm pretty sure, who is a Leeds fan, will already be in love with. He's absolutely class. There's a few things. Obviously, this is based on Football Manager 17, and... It's a special database that I've loaded, so they're all in. Uh, it's actually based in 2016, so it's a year behind where they would actually be, so he's actually 26 years old. Uh, but the, the key thing is there's a couple of attributes on a couple of players which I completely disagree with. One, one being, for instance, Samu Saiz has got a work rate of 5. This is out of 20 for those who have never seen Football Manager. Uh, 20 being the highest, 1 being the lowest. Uh, as you can see there, all attributes are between 1 and 20. But there's no way that his work rate is only 5. Based on what we've seen, I don't even... It, even say that his tackling is better than six determination is better than seven but the key attributes as you can see dribbling uh first touch is pretty good it is it, very good actually to be fair passing and vision is very good technique is very good basically everything else is pretty accurate in my opinion everything seems to like marry up with how he's performed so far so i think you can't you know you can't really argue he's been really good since he's signed and these attributes kind of back up what it's been like so hopefully uh, also, worth mentioning, he apparently can play left midfield. I've not seen him do that yet. I think his best role is obviously the one that's highlighted as attacking midfielder centre. So that is him, uh, Samu Saiz. Obviously, we oh, by the way, we signed him from um, ST Huesca for £3.15 million. All these costs, by the way, uh, according to uh, www.transfermarket, without the E for some reason, in market.co.uk. Uh, yeah, that's the site where I've got these figures from, so feel free to disagree with them. Um, I, th I think some, they seem to be kind of accurate, you know, as close to what I've heard anyway. Next, we're going to move on to uh, Yanni Aliaski, uh, otherwise known as Ezgian. Or Ez I can't even say his first name. I don't think many people can. He is primarily a right midfielder. We signed him, of course, from Lugano, FC Lugano in Switzerland, uh, for 2.25 million, which so far, I'm based on, you know, current showing so far, absolute bargain. Um, as you can see, well rounded, I think is probably the best way to put him. He's obviously not the tallest, he's only five foot eight, the same height as Samu Saiz. Shoots some distance and kills the ball, cuts inside for the right wing. Kind of accurate as well. Um obviously left footed. Yeah, well rounded I think. I'd like I'd like to think he'd get a bit of a an increase in, in attributes in some areas. You know, I think um his determination has gotta be a lot higher than ten, easily. Um and work rate as well, because from what we've seen it he's up and down, up and down the wing all the time. Um but yeah, that is uh, Alioski, of course, we all know about him and is valued at 6.25 million on here, which is very, very good as well. Next up is Hadi Sako. Now, a lot of people, there's like a love hate sort of relationship with Hadi Sako because he's got the ability. He's just the most, you know, I'd, I'd say decisions is too high at eight. It should be like two because he always makes the wrong decisions. You know, it, it reminds me of, of uh, Raheem Sterling, but he's, uh, dare I say, he's worse than him because I don't even rate him. But He's got the pace, he's got the flair, he's got the dribbling, he can set people on. But he gets into that into that, you know, final third and 
the decision. He, he takes on the player when he should be passing it, or crossing it, or shooting. He'll shoot when he's supposed to be passing it square when it's like he's a, like a tap in, into an empty net. And yeah, it, it just needs. If he did, if he worked on that and actually sorted that out, it, it would be class. But he's got to sort that out, otherwise he's just going to be a no hope. And to be honest with you, I don't think he's going to feature much with all the other signings that we've brought in since he arrived permanently. So next we're going to look at Click or Click. I think it's pronounced Click, if I remember rightly. Where are you, where are you Matthias? There he is. Poland International, of course. So it's quite a decent signing. He's, he's joined from SC20 for 1.53 million, again, according to the website. And solid player, to be honest with you. Um, good at passing. Technique and vision are very good as well. Um, not the best at tackling, so he's more of an attacking sort of player. Um, and yeah, he's pretty pretty well-rounded otherwise. It's just uh, the defensive side of his game. But in an attacking sense, going forward and creating chances looks looks pretty good. But yeah, that is uh, Mateus Klik. Moving on, we're going to look at J.R.I. Groats. Now, I'm not too sure about these like star ratings because at the minute it says... Uh, Calvin Phillips has got a five-star potential rating. Well, four-star, definitely. Five-star, maybe, for the championship. And if anyone watched my series that I did, Life at Leeds, it doesn't really develop into anything, does it, Calvin Phillips? And I give him plenty of game time. And there's no way... I, I don't think Calvin Phillips is going to end up being a better player than J. Roy Groot. I mean, he just looks... Look at his attributes. Let's just look at him, shall we? I mean... He's 18 year old, 19 now in real life. Determination, it can't be too. That looks terrible. But his other attributes are pretty good, well rounded for a, for a young kid. Uh, you know, for, strength 14, six foot four um, in height. You know, I, I don't know. I just think he's got more potential than what it suggests. Callum Flitz, I do rate him. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think he's going to be a top class midfielder. He might be a bottom end at best uh, Premier League midfielder, in my opinion. Oh, I forgot to mention as well, we signed him from. Um, NEC Nijmegen, I think it is, for 1.44 million. And there's been a lot of hype around him. A lot of Leeds fans are very happy with his signing. He's an absolute tank. He's got a massive head. Uh, and anyone with a massive head, you won't mess with, would you really? He's got massive like shoulders as well. as nearly as big as me, uh, which is obviously is not true. But, um, yes, I'm, I'm very pleased with his sign. Can play in a couple of other um, positions as well. So it's one definitely to look out for in terms of you know, substitutions, I think, to start off with, and maybe getting a starting role as time progresses, because obviously we've had a, a lot of signings, especially in the attackers' uh, department. So next we're going to look at uh, Sabiki. He only signed yesterday on deadline day. Uh, Powell Sabiki, and this is him. He looks decent, to be fair. 22, well, 23, I can need to remember, it's a year behind, so he's 23 years old, and we signed him from uh, Malmo for 1.44 million, uh, Sweden... Um, player as well is is a friend of Pontus Janssen by all accounts as well, and you know he's not bad for a striker. Kind of reminds me in terms of his attributes to Marcus Antonsen. Um, in terms of his finishing, is not the highest, but his off the ball is very good and he's quite quick. That's basically what Antonsen was as well. But who knows? He is a bit younger. He's got a chance to to progress. He can also operate as a winger as well, so he's quite versatile. Um, so that's another thing that maybe was lacking from Antonsen and Christensen has actually said that he, he likes players that are versatile the one weakness I would highlight from him is his strength he's only 7 uh, out of 20 which is quite weak for someone who's 6 foot tall but I still think you know he could cause some problems definitely in the championship so next on the list is uh, Caleb Ekiban the most disappointing signing in terms of this game because I've been really impressed with him since he's come in um, yeah, the Ghanaian, 23-year-old from Verona. And as you can see, he's pretty pap, isn't he, really? Determination of one? Come on. He's better than that. Um, based on what I've seen, anyway, he looks very determined and he works hard as well. Got a beaming smile when he, when he does decide to smile. But yeah, I'm, I've been quite pleased with him. He flies on his 10, he's been doing back heels everywhere when he's played. But, you know, I think this is a guy who's probably going to get a boost on the game. But in terms of this, it doesn't look like he's going to get much game time. But... That might be true, because, again, we've signed a lot of strikers. With Woods going, we've signed three strikers, technically, you know, for the price of one. So, we signed him for Verona. Is it Verona? It is Verona. Yeah, Chivo, Chievo, Verona, for 504k. I don't think that's a bad amount of money for a, a rotation sort of option as a striker. But the one thing I will say is it can only play up top. So, but, yeah, I, I, I like this guy, but whether he features that much remains to be seen. 
And then the last player for that that is worth an amount of money is Felix Viedweld. I think that's how you say it. A very good goalkeeper in my opinion, especially on on this game. I, there was a lot of uh, debate about him coming into the team. Uh, I must admit, I were a bit annoyed uh, at the time because I thought Green was absolutely exceptional. But you've got to think of the bigger picture, in my opinion, this is. You've got to think of it as it's like a three, four year plan with Christensen and obviously Radrizani, chairman. And Green's 38 years old this time. And that means you're going to need a new keeper at some point. So I know why he's done it. He's got him in early, got his keeper that he wanted in early, so he can use him for the next three to four years. Because obviously Green, because if you think about it, all the players, especially even the ones that have signed new contracts, have all been signing three, four-year contracts. Not two years or one year, three, four-year contracts. So it's, it's a project. And I personally think that that's why he's, he's brought this lad in, Felix, the cat in the goal. You know, there's all sorts of puns that can be made with him. But that's the reason, I, that's what I mean. He's, they brought him in basically for the future, uh, in my opinion. That's why Rob Green has gone, much to a lot of people's chagrin. But if he wants to get... Premiership splinters in his ass, then fair dues. But anyway, we signed him from Werder Bremen. Uh, where are we? Yeah, 450 grand. And I think it's a good signing. Um, and he knows the striker that came in yesterday. I'll get on to him eventually. But before that, we're going to be looking at some freebies that came in. The first one we'll look at is Magic Gomez, who we got from uh, Liverpool. Of course, so this is a left midfielder, like an well, attacking winger, if you like, uh, or attacking midfield centre. We've seen him playing at left back, which I think that'll have to change um, as well. Uh, obviously for the next game, because that's where he has been playing. And he, he's just a player that's got a little bit of a potential. Apparently he's Spanish. I didn't know that. But uh, yeah, there's a lot, I think he, he may get a little bit of an increase in, in attributes, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if they stay roughly the same. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I haven't been that impressed with him. The only thing I think that might change is his positional sense. He'll be play, put in as a left back as well. So we'll have to wait and see with him. Uh, my actual brother-in-law, in if I was to get married, uh, which I would say I'm not married, but um, he said he, he was really impressed with him. He's a Liverpool fan, and he used to he, he, was, he watched like the under 18s like perform, and he thought he stood out quite well. So he said he might have a potential star on his hands, but we'll have to wait and see as per with every other player. Moving on though, and we're going to be looking at Vernon and Ita. I was quite pleased with this uh, sign. It's quite a big, big um, co um, coop. In my opinion, very versatile, of course, and it's for me in, in terms of the defense is calmness personified. He, in my opinion, anyway, is really composed. According to this game, it kind of backs it up, sort of. He's got a couple of weaknesses, them being basically in the terms of strength and jumping and, and heading, um, but otherwise, it's very solid. And I don't think he's, I think he's going to be like a consistent performer, like an average in seven out of ten. Um, the, like I said, the one worry is probably if corners and things like that. It's definitely going to be stood on the post. He's only five foot six as well, which is about my height, which I know exactly what it's like to be that height. Um, but yes, very good signing. He's won the championship already with Newcastle. Knows what this division's about. Yes, I know he played quite a few games off the bench, but I still think it's a really good signing, and I think he's done well so far, in my opinion. We obviously got him from Newcastle United, and he's had obviously he started off at um, did he start off at Ajax? I think he did. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, it was at Ajax before he ended up going to Newcastle for an undisclosed fee, which seems to be the, the, the regular uh, at the minute. Right, moving on, we've got uh, a young a young lad. He's highlighted on this list, or highlighting, because he actually looks quite good, but he's gone straight out on loan to Cultura y Deportiva Leonesa. Um, and yeah, you can see here, he's got some ability about him. He's a Moroccan, uh, be 24 years old, I think, now, uh, in real life. So... He's got probably a little bit more improving to do, but we'll have to wait and see. Again, um, it looks very handy. Definitely one for the future. Um, and yeah, he's. I'd like to think that he, he could be a good player for us. You know, I, I'm not entirely sure when we signed him, why he was going out on loan. But never mind. I think, it, I'm not entirely sure, but he might have been playing centre-back as well. Not 100%, but that doesn't make sense because his tackling's only five. I know there was a centre-back that we signed. He went straight out on loan. And now I'm thinking because he's on loan, it might have been him. But I'm not 100% sure. I don't know much about him, if I'm being completely honest, because he hasn't featured in the first team. Right, moving on. Start with one of his loanees. We've got Pierre-Michel Lasoga. It's a very French name, but he is indeed German. Um... And to be honest with you, he's very similar to Chris Wood, if not a bit stronger, better anticipation and braver as well, and of course more determined. 
Um, and heading was, you know, it's better, basically it looks like it's an improvement on Chris Wood. The only thing I'd say is worse at is his acceleration, but everything else was pretty much similar. Plus he's got, like, he's, apparently he's both footed, which is very handy as well. Um, he's not the best at dribbling. First touch could be better, but it's a big unit, it looks of things. Six foot two, 300 pound monster, apparently. Powerful striker is his media description. And, yeah, I mean, we haven't seen much about him, really. By all accounts, he's... Is very good. Let's have a look at his history. Um, it's got 50 goals in 151 appearances, which, in my opinion, isn't bad because it's won every three games. I mean, it's rare you get a striker that gets a goal every game or two games. So three games, obviously, it's not a bad return. The one, the one concerning factor is this probably: four goals in 26 appearances. I did, I think I did read that he made 15 starts and 11 subs. I think I might be incorrect, but I'm not 100%. I'm sure I read that. And then eight goals in 30. But he's the sort of player, I think, if we had two up top, which we don't play with. But it could be one that could link up well with Samu Saiz, who's coming in as like a shadow striker to get a few goals. Uh, linking up off a target man type, if you like. Uh, but yeah, that is um, my thoughts on him. I think he's he could be good. He just got to hit the ground running. If he doesn't hit the ground running, that's where I think Groat might come in. I'm going to say it's Groat. It could be Groat because people have been making puns like saying grow bags so i'm guessing it could be pronounced grow i'm not entirely sure but anyway he's coming on loan for the season by all accounts we're paying nothing according to this game but I, I, i've heard that we're paying 25 uh, percent of his wages and hamburger are paying uh, the rest but yeah he's one definitely to look out for in an, in the coming weeks i think from this from this point forward and then we're going to move on to a centre-back, which, uh, for some reason, the game has tried to make it as realistic as possible and added the injuries in. However, I'm almost certain it was an ankle injury that ruled him out, not a torn hamstring for four to five months. And I'm almost certain he's back in training already. So that is incorrect, so ignore that. But he's a defender with uh, a bit of potential. Um, very, mentally, he's very, 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 very good, to be fair. We're going to say very strong, but strong's probably an overstatement. But for his age, 21 years, well, 22 years old now, as it were, uh, that's why I think they'll have a bit of an increase because they're going to be on a year and obviously if it's a young player they're going to progress somewhat. Um, but yeah, he's, all round he's, he's, he's decent for this level. Obviously we saw him in the first game of the season. He looked very good to be fair against Bolton before he picked up his injury. And fortunately Liam Cooper's come in and he stepped up to the plate and you know, long may it continue. But again, a lone player for the year. Who knows, if, if he ends up being a quality player, but maybe he might be a sign him, who knows? I mean, dare we dream, if we can get into the Premier League, we'll be able to probably afford him. Um, whether it's it's still the case, I mean, his contract does expire, I believe, at the end of the year. I'm not sure if he signed one just before he joined us, but we'll have to wait and see with him as well. But obviously, we signed him on loan from Everton. Uh, no English caps yet, but uh, I would imagine eventually he probably will do, because our centre-backs, or our decent centre-backs, seem to be in terms of England, this is seem to be aging a bit, so I can't see them being around for too much longer. But next, we're going to look at Cameron Borthwick Jackson, who signed from our, obviously our big rivals, Manchester United. Can play centre back or left back. He's five foot eleven, uh, an enthusi enthusiastic fullback who is spirited, and yeah, he's fairly quick. He's decent, very good at crossing. According to this, um, little things that, that hinder him: determination, being five. Um, a few of the attributes as well, which could be a little bit higher. But the key ones for being a defender, besides the, the, the determination, are very good. So he's got a high work rate, which is good. Passing's decent for a fullback, um, and like I say, off the ball could be better as well. Should be like maybe at least like 13 for him to be a top quality player. But of course, he's still young. He's 20 years old. It can only improve. And yeah, again, we'll have to wait and see if he has a good season with us. He had the season obviously last season. Uh, how many times going to say season in one? in one session I nearly said season again but um, yeah he uh, was on loan I believe at Wolves last season so it'll be interesting to see how he got on um, how he yeah gets on sorry should I say after his he's already in the championship but yeah got obviously room for improvement but again he's a loan player I think this one's more likely to be a non-signing at the end of it if I'm honest with you it is I'd be very surprised put it that way but Again, he's not featured that much, but you know when he has played, he's played quite well. So I think he, we can't rule him out um, just yet for more football because defence is probably where we've got the least amount of numbers. But anyway, obviously we're signing for Man United. I think I already mentioned it. But now we're going to have a look at the last two players, which I'm going to look at, uh, who are Andy Lonergan, 
former keeper, of course. He played for us, I think, under Neil Warnock, I think it was. And he decided to let him go in favour of bringing in uh, Paddy Kenny. And as, as, you know, as backups come, he's very good. He won't be in anywhere near as much money as what Rob Green was on. And I think it was a bit of a no-brainer. Uh, we needed someone. I, I mean, I would have maybe liked to have seen Bailey Peek up Farrell being given the, you know, the backup goalkeeper slot, if you like. So then if there was an injury um, to Felix, then he could come in and, and maybe get some experience. But to be honest with you, I think it's always the case. Uh, managers like to have, you know, experienced goalkeepers, if possible, I think, uh, especially at the higher level. And, yeah, I still think he's a decent signing. He's not a bad goalkeeper. I, I remember on the, the actual Football Manager games, he used to be, like, uh, one of the best keepers you could sign when he was, like, 22 or something like that. But, yeah, obviously time has progressed and he's not really turned out to be as good as what he, he used to be. But, it's still, like I say, he's a good uh, backup goalkeeper. We signed him on a free. He did last play for Fulham uh, and he did play quite a few games for him. Uh, I can't remember who he played for, actually, in real life last season, though. Um, it does elude me. Pa apparently, paid two hundred twenty-five grand. I don't think that's true. I'm si it says it's side of me, free, and I'm I'm inclined to think that that's correct. Now, the last player I will look at before we go into the outs that have happened, and that is uh, where are you going, Connor Shaughnessy. This is another player who should be changed because at the end of the day, he's not a central midfielder. Well, he is, but he can play cent centre back as well. I'm almost certain he said he's six foot two. But he had uh, an impact in the first couple of games. Um, we had an injury uh, injury crisis, so to speak. And he stepped in at centre-back. Now, looking at him here, he looks absolutely dog-turd. But I'm, I'm almost certain that he will get an increase without without a doubt. So it'll be interesting to see how he turns out. We signed him uh, last season, I believe it was, actually, uh, for, on a free from Reading. But I think he's a decent prospect. Uh, he's done really well since he's, when he first came in. And it's quite quick as well, so I'll have to wait and see if he gets any more game time. I would imagine to get game time in the cup competitions if we get put against lesser opposition. So that brings us to the end of the ins. Let's have a look at some of the outs. I'm going to have to actually type these players in um, and see how you feel about it. I won't mention too much about uh, Luke Murphy. Uh, I think we've known his time has been up for a while. Um, just have a quick gander now. Luke Murphy, here we go. Is that Burton? A decent player, not the best physically, but otherwise a good player. Uh, probably at his level with a team like Burton, it, it seems. We all had high hopes for him. He was like, um, it was deemed the best player in League One when we signed him. We signed him for a million quid. It was the first time I believe we'd signed a, a, a player for a million quid since like we got um, relegated from League One uh, into League One. I think it was. It might have been a couple of years before. I think it were uh, Creswell who cost us the most money before that. Anyway. But anyway, yeah, he seems to, he's gone on loan um, for another season. I think his contract's up at the end of the year as well. I might be incorrect. He might have actually have another year. Hopefully, though, we might be able to move him on because he's still on, I think, 10, 10 grand a week. So we'll have to wait and see. But uh, kind of disappointed because he, he came with high expectations and he hasn't really fulfilled them uh, with Legion United anyway. Um, next, we'll have a look at... I mean, we've got youngsters. We've got Louis Coyle. I think we've got two... Well, we've got Brady and we've got Ailing, And I don't think he's going to get much of a chance, if I'm honest with you. He's not really an increase on what we've got. Um, I mean, I could show you a comparison, actually. Compare with... Uh, they're not on there. I'll have to go back to the the home the squad screen and just quickly show you. We've got Ailing there, who you know, mentally is a lot better. And he's just, he's just class, isn't he? We all love Ailing, don't we? Uh, and then we've got Brady, who apparently has got a long-term injury. He's pulled hamstring, but we all know that it was his shoulder that he dislocated or something. Yeah, so in comparison, he's, he's not going to get a sniff against these two. And he's Anita as well that can play it right back. So he's definitely not going to get a chance. So I can see exactly why he's been sent out on loan. Marcus Antonsen. Um, I'll show you the low knees first, and then we'll look at the outs, if I remember them all. Oh, I've looked at the wrong Antonsen, never mind. Marcus Antonsen, there he is. He's at Blackburn, of course, and you can kind of see now what I mean a little bit with Sabiki. He can kind of play on the wings, but he never played on the wings for us, so I'm not entirely sure why that's a thing. But, uh, yeah, he, he reminds me very much of Antonsen does Sabiki, and that's exactly why, why he's, what you're looking at there. Uh, Tyler Denton's gone out on loan to Port Vale. That's fair enough. I mean, he's not going to get a look in as well. I did think he might have got a chance early on, but then with Bothwick Jackson coming in, there's absolutely no hope. 
and like I said, there's Berardi and Anita that can cover that position as well. So he's got versatile players for the defence. And then lastly, let's have a, la a laugh. Well, I say lastly before I look at the, um, the actual main outs. Let's help if I could spell. Belushi has gone to Palermo. Palermo? Is, when did he go to Palermo? There's something I'm missing because this is updated from today. The 1st of uh, September. So something must have happened. I, I must have missed it. But this is Belushi. He's gone on a free anyway. Uh, but he's, he's either gone on loan to Empoli or that's been terminated and then he's gone to Palermo. I've no idea. No idea at all. But uh, yeah, if I have a look at the uh, outs. Oh, here we go. Here are the outs. I've got the, the screen going. Apologies if anything's happening on the other screen, but it shouldn't be. I'll just quickly fly through them. We obviously got rid of Chris Wood. Let's have a quick look at him, just for comparison's sake, against uh, uh, Lasoga. And here he is. He's obviously a bit younger. Uh, like I said before, he's not as strong. He's not. A, he's a little bit quicker, but everything else. You know, the sauce of blue numbers before. Blue means very, 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 very good. And, uh, yeah. A little bit good to see him go. He obviously scored a lot of goals for his last season. But it's one of those things, isn't it? You, you, can, you know, if... Premier League clubs come sniffing. Players are coming to like the peak years. They, they want to be playing it. You know, he could say, "Oh no, I'm staying at Leeds," and just say we don't get promoted. He's in the Championship for another year. You know, and, and he might not play, perform as well, and then he won't get his dream move into the Premier League. With Burnley, dream move to Burnley. Something, something sound right there. And we've got him in the cup, so hopefully Pontus can destroy him for choosing Burnley over us. So uh, next, obviously, we, we've touched on Rob Green. Uh, and Charlie Taylor. I'm not going to go into too much in depth with all these. In fact, I can see it now, actually, that um, Pelushi has indeed gone to Palermo on a free transfer in Serie B. Sullivan Dakara, the Duke. Let's have a look at Dakara. He's actually gone. A little bit good about him because he, he, he had promised. I mean, he was a tank, but he just couldn't do anything at all. <laughs> Apart from scoring an absolute scream, an absolute world here against Forest. He's actually deemed as a free agent here for some reason. It might be because the actual league isn't loaded. Um, that might be why, but he's gone to Osmanil Spa in the Turkish Super League. So, good luck to him. Um, obviously, he had, his physicals were, were really good for this level. Determination very high, work rate were very good. But, even though I thought something when he first joined, joined he, he didn't look like a, a workhorse. He looks like a bit lazy. But, never mind. That's my opinion. Uh, but yeah, he always lacked in the finishing, didn't get too many goals. And for a unit, six foot one, who's like a, a tank, his heading was only 10, it was turd. But, you know, we had some good times with him. We had a, you know, he's got a couple of crucial goals and what have you. Uh, so good luck to him. Um, otherwise, uh, the only other player I can think of off the top of my head is Liam Brigcutt. So I'm just having a quick look. Uh, yeah, it seems to be. The only other one is Jordan Pataka, but didn't really see enough of him. He's gone to St. Trinden. Uh, Trinden, how you pronounce it. He's gone there for free. Um, uh, Charlie Taylor, oh, we all knew about Charlie Taylor going, so there's no point looking at him. But yeah, we'll have a quick last look at Liam Brickup before I call this a video. Um, and yeah, if it help if I could spell. Liam Brickup. I was good about seeing him go, to be honest with you, but... I had an idea that he was going, going to be going in pre-season. He, he just he had a shocker against um, Ibar. We played Ibar and we got beat 3-0 in the first half and he started. And second half it changed. He changed the players to Phillips and uh, O'Kane who obviously have started the season really well. And we came back to 3-2 and you know we were playing really well. But you know I liked Liam Bricker. He had a lot of, he, I don't know, he, he had a few injuries in that. And But other than that, he always I always thought he'd give 100%. Um, a very much a team player. Always got the ball and sprayed it around, and and quite well did quite well. But I think that in the way that Christensen is setting up, I personally think that he's too much of a defensive sort of player. If you know what I mean, he's not very good at, in an attacking sense. I mean, it shows there finishing six, long shot six. He's not going to be scoring many goals. Whereas we've already seen Phillips get a couple of goals, um, and then you've got um, okay, and who seems to be getting into advanced areas a lot. And, you know, you, you trust probably O'Kane more than you would Liam Brigcutt in an advanced uh, attacking central midfield sort of role. So, a little bit um, disappointed to see him go. But, hey, we got, I think we got about a million quid for him. He doesn't actually say, but I'm, I'm, I'm certain it said either a million or just less than a million. The only other player really to, to speak of is um, is Lee Irwin. But we didn't see enough of him really to, to warrant really covering him. But, yeah, 
um, looking at the team. And yeah, that is it, really. Um, I think it's an exciting season. It, it's going to be an exciting season. We've had the best start in, I think it said, uh, I think since our first season. I want to say since our first season in League One. It's our best start because if we, I'm sure we won the first five games. But overall, apparently it's since our 2000, 2002, three, two, uh, I can't even remember. 2001, 2002 season, I'm sure that's what I read. 15 years or something, Dad. Best start in 15 years. Um, but yeah, we you know we've started really well. We usually end up starting poorly. Well, we have done it the last couple of years, and then coming into it, uh, particularly last season, I'm just hoping it can keep this mental mentality going and can keep everyone happy because, like I said, there's a lot of competition for places. I mean, a lot of people have been screaming for Ronaldo Vieira to play, and he's not even getting anywhere near the team, and and Calvin Phillips is keeping him out of side, but. To be fair, Calvin Phillips has done all right. He's a tough tackle. He gets stuck in. You could argue so does uh, Ronaldo Vieira, but he obviously f he's got a, a bit of a thing for Phillips at the minute. So, like I say, we can't really complain. We're creating chances. We're scoring goals. We've got rid of his, his best striker and we're still scoring goals. I mean, we made, in my opinion, apart from like the first 20 minutes against Sunderland, we made them look very, really ordinary. Um, Forrest, who beat Newcastle, uh, we beat, made them look um, very ordinary as well. So, it's very pleasing um, so far. So... Let us know what you think in the comments below. Let us know uh, what do you think of the transfer. Do you think it's good business that we've done? Are you unhappy that we haven't spent all the the wood money um, all in one go on one player? Or do you think it'd be unwise to do that because then you're spending it all in one go? It could be a flop. It could break his leg. You know, is it better to get the three options that we have done with getting Lasoga, um, Gro, and Sabiki? Because I, I, it's good business, it's providing they turn out to be uh, you know good players. Because look at Saiz and Alioski and the impacts they've had so far. Um, between them, they've only cost like five and a bit million. So compared to like the fifteen million on one player that could, like I say, break a leg. But obviously, you can't think like that. You look at the money that's been banded around in, in this transfer window overall. But anyway, yeah, let us know what you think in the comments. How do you think we're going to fare in the Premier League as a, in the Premier League in the in the Championship this season? Are we going to make it to the Premier League? It's the best start in ages. We've got reason to be pr um, optimistic. I'm still a realistic though, me personally, and it's going to be tough. There's some very good sides in there. I think Wolves will walk it personally in the end because all the money that they've spent it's just ridiculous. Um, and yeah, like I say, I think playoffs is definitely achievable. But we have to stick together. We have to keep together. Get keep the team together as well. Hopefully, if when January comes, we don't lose any big players. But yeah, hopefully, um, things will continue as they have been doing. But yeah, enough jibber jabber. I think that's about time I called it a video there. Thank you very much for watching, as always. Um, well, anyone who has, if you are interested in Football Manager, I've currently got um, a series with Tenerife. Uh, you might have seen it. I'm not going to bother editing this video too much. But basically, I've got. Um, well, I'll show you. I've got basically a Bo Selector mask. <laughs> Craig David is the chairman of, of Tenerife. And yeah, he hired me. And there's a little bit of funny stories that happen in in amongst the series. Check us out. Uh, check it out. Obviously, if you just click on my channel from like the, this video, you'll be able to find it. It's one of the, the next video. It'll be one of the next videos you see. I've also got a fail of the week series as well, where I show errors. I have people, um, other like content creators, submit fails, uh, and there's some crackers in there. So by all means, have a look at them. If you're looking for shorter videos, they're only about two minutes, two and a half minutes long. So yeah, that's enough. Should be. I'm gonna shut up now. Yeah, let us know. In the, just tell us in the comments to shut up, G. Uh, yeah, so I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.